first, I want to establish what don't I want to? I want to pick an equation for this one, don't I? Well, yeah. Although it's hard to do that because we don't have our three variables yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me help you with this. Now, you were on the right track. You were saying that at the final position, they would both have the same velocity. But that's not. Yeah, that's not true. However, what do they have is the same. We know they have the same displacement. Yeah. All right. So actually, we I can plug in something for delta x here. I don't know a number for delta x, but I have a mathematical expression for delta x. What is our mathematical expression for delta x? Oh, Just x based on the work on the board. x final minus x initial? That, yeah, that, that's a true equation, but that won't help us too much here, because that just introduces new variables. Here's our mathematical expression for delta x. Oh, okay. We can just use the work we did here. So basically, um, this is basically an algebra problem where we're going to have multiple equations and multiple unknowns. Well. Here we already have one equation, and remember that the way you usually solve those is substitution. Well, we can then just substitute this equation into here. So I can write down something for delta x. I can write that delta x is 21 times the time. This is a pretty hard problem now that I'm seeing that we, uh, we picked out. Well, if we can get this right, we should be able to do any of these. We've got this, this, and this. Now, um, the, question, the problem is asking us for both of these variables. All right, well, what would be a good equation to use here now? Um, OK, well, obviously, we want to use an equation that has these three variables. So go ahead and pick out an equation that has those three variables. So wh whereas in the past, I would pick it out based on what it doesn't have? Yeah, we're not going to be able to use that here. But we want to pick an equation. We figured out stuff about this variable. We figured out a number for this variable. We don't have a number for delta x, but we know something about it. So we need it. So we need an equation. It has delta x. Yeah. So what's the first equation that you see that's got those? Um, Good, so I'll write that down. Uh-oh, but there's t squared. It's still the same variable, so that's fine. It's OK because we have everything else, right? Because we have delta x, we have the initial, and we have a. Well, let us uh, write the equation down, and we'll see how that works. Okay. Again, I'm going to leave out the x subscripts because we have too many subscripts anyway. So here's the equation. All right, now let's plug as much as we can into this. Well, what can we plug in for delta x? Uh, 21t. Right. Now, this is where a lot of people would get messed up. A lot of people would think, gee, there's no point to plug in 21t for delta x because it just, it, it's not a number. But the point is, the way to solve algebra problems is to reduce the number of variables. Well, we just got rid of the delta x variable. Now, instead of having both delta x and t, we only have we only have t. So anything that we can do to substitute to get rid of a variable is helpful, even if that just even if it leaves us with another variable. All right, now what's our v initial? Um, we're talking about the police right now? Yeah, remember we're using the kinematics equation, so we must be working with the police car. Because it's got it's um, this is the only equation we needed for the motorist. And the police's initial velocity, what did we say that was? That should be something that we have written down. Now, here's where our organization comes in handy. Let's see what we have on the board. Oh, zero, zero. Right. All right. This is why it's so important to actually physically write down the five variables in an organized fashion. So then you can retrieve that information when you need it. We don't want to have this all scattered all over the place. So we know this is zero. That's a big help. That's our first simplification, because this term is just going to drop out now. Since the v initial is zero, this term will just drop out. So we only have one term on the left-hand side. Um, how about our acceleration? Wait, what about the t? Well, what's zero times t? Okay, zero. Yeah. So if you wanted to, you could write that out separately. But we know this term is going to drop out because we're multiplying by zero. Okay. Now we have to plug in for our acceleration. So
So now I have to do the quadratic, huh? The quadratic formula? That is one approach you could use here. However, um, I've, I've never seen an exam question where you have used the quadratic formula, and there's a way that we could get around that here, too. So let me show you how we can use this algebraically well, without the quadratic okay. formula. I need to set it equal to zero, right? That would be the approach if you were going to use a treat like the quadratic equation. So I'll, I'll show you a, a trick here. Now, there's one obvious thing we could do to simplify this equation. What is the obvious thing we can do to make a minor simplification? One half times 2.5. Yeah, that might seem trivial, but every little bit helps. So let's go ahead and do that. By the way, as an algebra point, notice that here we have one equation with one unknown in it. That means if, if our algebra skills are good enough, we should be able to solve for t. If you, have, if you have one equation and one unknown, we should be able to use algebra to solve. So let's see if but we can do I that. I thought that t and t squared are different. Let's see. Well, t squared is not a variable. It's just t squared. It's not an additional variable. I mean, they're different numbers, but the only, the only variable here is t. After all, you could just as well say that 21t and 1.25t are different. Um, it's still, it's still, it's, uh, there's still only one variable in this equation. The only variable in the equation is t. So, to, to answer your question, t squared is not a variable. Okay, but I thought, maybe because they did the quadratic formula a lot in class, so mm -hmm. when you do that, like, the t squared and the t and then the constant, those are all considered different, right? Like t squared and t? Uh, I guess it depends on the context. Um, they're not considered different variables. They're all the um, t, uh, there's the, the only variable, so um, t is not the same as t squared. That's right. true. t is not the same as t squared, but t squared is not a variable. So um, you can manipulate it. Yeah, I, I guess the, the point I was trying to make isn't very clear, and we're over time, so we, we won't spend the time to try to figure it out. Uh, all I was trying to say is that we should be able to figure out what t is. Okay. So let's see how we're going to be able to figure out what t is here um, without using the quadratic formula. Well, the trick that we're going to use is to notice that we can basically cancel a t from each side because there's a t on the left and there's a t on the right. So does it become 21 equals 1.25t? That's right. That's right. Now. Let's be mathematically careful. What are we doing to both sides that allows us to cancel the t? Dividing by t. That's right. So we should really write it that way so that we know that what we're doing is mathematically legal. Now the t's will cancel on the left-hand side, and one of the t's will cancel on the right-hand side. So we're left with 21 equals 1.25 All that we've done is we canceled one t from the left, and we canceled one of the powers of t from the right. But we haven't done anything with the numbers yet. Okay. Yeah, so what's t squared divided by t? It's t to the first power. So we had t to the second power divided by t to the first power. That still leaves one power of t here. Okay. And in order to get t, can't we divide by 1.25? That's right. Notice how helpful this trick was. We don't have a quadratic equation anymore. So this is a trick that we can use. Time is always positive, we won't even worry about the sign here. But you're right, that came out positive. Obviously, if it had come out negative, we would have known we made an algebra mistake. Yeah, what number did you get? still very helpful to us. Now that we know that, we should be able to figure out other things that we need. Okay, so we, um, so do you see where we got the 16.8? Yeah. All right, all right. Now, in, in this case, we were able to use a trick, so we didn't have to use the quadratic formula. By the way, you, this trick does, is not always useful. The only reason we could do this is there were no other terms that didn't have a t in them. For example, suppose there had been a new term like plus 58. 
well, then I couldn't use this trick because there, there wouldn't be a t factor here. So the problems that you were seeing in class probably had this extra numerical term. Yeah. yeah. But you're saying you don't But you probably will not see those on the exam. I can't, I've never seen one of those on the exam. Uh, on the exam, they're going to give you problems where you can use a trick to avoid awesome. using the quadratic formula. Okay. okay. Um, so what's our next step? Uh, oh, so I guess I made a mistake here. I shouldn't have put a question mark here because technically this isn't what the question was asking us for. These are what the question was asking. So I should have taken this out. All right, but now I should build this into my list. Now we know the time. We know the time is 16.8 seconds. And that's both for the police and the motorist, right? That's right. That's why we don't have N and P subscripts over here. Uh, but we're pretty much done with the motorist. We've already used his equation over here. So we're just going to be dealing with the police. But this is very important. Now that we've learned a new number, we should build that into our overall approach here. 